Hey guys, welcome back to Struggle Debunk. This is episode number 10 today. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this today and not a couple of days ago, because there have been a bunch of things going on around me in the ancient city. It's not exactly safe here, and there have been a bunch of messing things up and ruining my schedule. So, let's talk about those things specifically. I had something else planned to do, but instead of that, we're going to be talking about what's going on now. Let's get started. So, what's been going on in the last couple of days? I'm sure you've seen a bunch of things on the news. A bunch of them are true, a bunch of them are fake, a bunch of them are half true. In fact, most of them are half true, and that's what you've already been seeing. So, I'm, gonna hit, I'm here to set things straight and let you know what's actually going on. Okay? Let's start with the timeline. On the night of the, of the uh, 9th of May, on the night of the 9th of May, what happened? The Palestinians on Al-Aqsa, on the mosque on the top of the hill, next to the uh, Dome of the Rock, were preparing to create riots. You can see pictures over here. There are pictures of them ma amassing stones and preparing to throw them at people. My friend was hit by a stone. Great. My friend's friend was hit by a stone and taken to the hospital. These riots happened and there was a bunch of attacks on Israelis, including cops and civilians. The IDF, of course, did not stand by and let this happen. The IDF went up to Al-Aqsa. Okay, and when the IDF went up to Al-Aqsa, those rioters that were throwing stones hid within the people who were praying. And that's why you have all these videos of people, you know, saying, look, the IDF has gone on to Al-Aqsa and hurting people who are praying. That's what happened, because they were throwing stones at people. Okay? The IDF is not going to just sit around and let our civilians be targeted. They are a defense force, and they are here to defend us, and intend to completely defend us when they can. Around the same time, something was happening on Sheikh Yara, also known as Shimon Sadiq. I'll explain more about that in a minute, but then I'm just going to continue with the timeline. In that timeline, we had the people throwing rocks from, uh, from Al-Aqsa, and the IDF started arresting people on Al-Aqsa. Of course, this happened every Ramadan, but this year it was specifically really bad. Because of that, other Arabs in Arabic places, like in Lod, Ramle, Ramal, um, one of those, I'm not sure, more places in around Israel, they started rioting. Rioting leads to police action. Police action leads to people getting hurt because they're rioting. That's what happened. There was a lynching attempt, a couple of them. Um, they should be on screen right now, around now. A couple of lynching attempts. There was a, a case of people... There were Palestinian Arabs saving Jews. Okay? I can bring this one on screen, and there's one a few, uh, time, a few minutes before over there too. There's a lot of Palestinians who are good. Don't get me wrong. The ones right now responsible for this violence are not good. They are the ones hurting a lot of people. Now, we had those riots going on. Israel was arresting people for rioting. And Gaza decided to get involved. Hamas decided, you know what, they're arresting our civilians. Well, they're not our civilians, they're their civilians and they're hurting people. But you know what, who cares? We're going to send them rockets. Over the last 48 hours, since 6 o'clock yesterday, there have been a full... 1,050 missiles headed at Israel. And that includes big areas like Gush Dan, that's Tel Aviv, um, Bnei Brak, Petah Tikva. There have been missiles headed to Beit Shemesh, Jerusalem, and of course the constant victims of Hamas, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Be'er Sheva, the ones in the south. They get the most missiles from them because they're the closest. 1,050 rockets have headed from Hamas to Israel. Okay, 1,050 rockets. A couple of hours after Hamas started striking, Israel decided to retaliate within Hamas. Israel bombed targets. I'm sure those are on screen now too. Israel bombed targets in Hamas. We're talking about high-level terrorist leaders. We're talking about this guy and this guy. Both of them terrorists. Unfortunately, Hamas's missiles are not exactly the highest quality. Their Qasims, they're not particularly good. They have long-range missiles too, but most of them are Qasims. And the Qasamim, as we call them, are not very high quality, and they end up, about a third of them, had been hitting Hamas. Well, not Hamas, had been hitting Gaza. A third of the rockets launched by Hamas have been hitting Gaza. And Hamas knows this, and Hamas doesn't care. Because Hamas just blames it on Israel, and that way they have civilian deaths, we have civilian deaths, and they don't care about their civilian deaths because their civilian deaths get blamed on us too. Israel is, of course, retaliating and hurting people. And yes, Israel has probably hit a few people that shouldn't have been hit. That happens when you hide rockets under civilian areas. Hamas hides.
ice their rockets and their launchers under hospital. Those, ter those terrorists I brought up earlier, they were hiding in an apartment building with people there. And Israel bombed it. And that's going to happen that people are going to get hurt. Why do people get hurt? Because Hamas hides weapons in civilian areas. Shikazad, what's going on over there? Well, we need a bit of a timeline for that too. Let's start from the beginning of the thing. We're talking about before 1948 when Israel built Sheikh Jarrah. Not Israel, Israel didn't exist as a state. Jesus bought the land legally from Arabs living in the land, and they started building an area there. That happened, people lived there, and then in 1948, Jordan invaded Sheikh Jarrah and the rest of the West Bank. What happened then? What happened then is that the Jordanians ethnically cleansed all the Jews from that land and removed them. What happens when Jordan has removed everyone from the land? I'll tell you what happens. There are no Jews. And when there are no Jews, in houses that Jews built, there are Arabs that want to live in houses and they move in. What happens when Arabs move in? They just live there. Now, when Jordan invaded Israel again in 1967, Israel took back Sheikh Jarrah, called Shimon Sadiq, and now they're stuck. They got Arabs living in a place that was Jewish, but what do we do? So there's been a legal lawsuit for about 50 years, and I believe the I believe the conclusion was that the Arabs are allowed to live there as long as they keep on paying rent, or keep on as long as they start paying rent. So Jewish houses with Arabs living in them because of ethnic cleansing of Jews, and they have to pay rent. I'm going to just give you a heads up: they did not pay rent, right? They're not paying rent, and when you're not paying rent, what happens? I'm sure any of you who haven't paid rent knows this. When you don't pay rent, you get evicted. Because it's not your house, it's someone else's house. They got evicted. And about 300 families getting evicted for living in other people's houses without paying rent. And the world is going crazy. Because they say, hey look, Israel's evicting Palestinians. That is true. Because the Palestinians are living in Israeli houses without paying rent. It's not about that. It's not about Sheikh Jarrah, it's not about Al-Aqsa Mosque, because both of those are obviously fake. What's happening is because Hamas wants to avoid the responsibility for not creating elections, and because they hate us. Okay, a couple of weeks earlier, the leader of, uh, of the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, decided that he didn't want there to be elections. Okay, 15 years earlier were the last elections, and he decided that elections were a thing of the past. They happened in 2006, not anymore because he's a dictator. No elections, and he was going to face backlash for it. I know, let's start a war with Israel. That's what they do all the time, it's what happened in Syria, it's what happened a million times beforehand. They decided to start a war with Israel, instead of facing up to the problems that they have in their own system. And that's why we've got all this battle going on. 1,050 rockets headed towards Tel Aviv and Gush Dan and Israel and Ashkelon and, and everywhere. I had to run half naked to a bomb shelter because it, called, it happened while I was asleep. My cousins in Tel Aviv had to run to a bomb shelter. My cousins in, in uh, Jerusalem had to run to a bomb shelter. My family hiding in bomb shelters. Kids hiding in bomb shelters. A five-year-old girl got shrapnel in her neck. Sixteen-year-old girl got killed. Fifty-two-year-old man got killed. Many people are dying from this. And then there's people like Trevor Noah saying things like this. Set aside motives and intentions and just look at technology, technology alone. Israel has one of the most powerful militaries in the world. They can crush Gaza like that. Not to mention one of the most advanced defense systems in the world. You shoot a rocket at them, it's probably not going to do anything to them because of their defense system. Right? They've got a giant Mutombo in the sky just knocking them down. And I know, I know that this is contentious. And I know that people are gonna hate me for this, but I just wanna ask an honest question here. If you are in a fight where the other person cannot beat you, how hard should you retaliate when they try to hurt you? Honest question. And I ask this question because I think of it like this. When I was a teenager, I would always get into fights with my little brothers. 
And little kids can be vicious, right? They're trying to punch you in the leg, trying to punch you in the nuts. They're, they're kids, they do that. But my mom would say to me, whenever I get angry, she'd go, Trevor, don't hit the kid back because they can't hurt you. You're a teenager and the kid is four. And I was like, yeah, but the kid is hitting me. He could hurt me. But my mom was like, yeah, but you're also so much bigger than the kid. You can crush him in an instant. Yeah, you heard that right. Israel has to just sit back, not let anything happen, not touch anyone, because Israel's bigger and stronger. And wouldn't it be mean if Israel hurts little poor Palestinians who are just weaker than us? Are you f***ing f***ing me? Are you? Are you serious? Is, is that what you're saying right now? Really? Come. People are dying. We have civilians dying because Hamas is targeting them. You expect us to sit back and do nothing? Really? I don't think so. No. Not going to sit back. Not going to do nothing while my civilians are being targeted. My people are dying. We are having our houses blown up. Yes, we have the most sophisticated weapons defense system in the world. People are still dying. Because I'll tell you what, when you receive 1,050 rockets headed towards you, people are going to die. And we're not going to be okay with that. We don't let people die. Okay? Our government is there to defend our civilians. And when our civilians are dying, our government is supposed to act. That's what's supposed to happen. It pisses me off. It does. Just all these people who have no idea what they're talking about. Trevor knows what he's talking about. Don't get me wrong, Trevor has a brain. Trevor knows what he's talking about. He's lying. Well, he's not lying to you because most of what he said is technically accurate. But he's giving you this wrong idea. And there are those spreading misinformation by accident. There are those people. They think they're doing the right thing. Hamas is all like, save the children. And people are like, well, you've got to save the children, right? And then there's people who are actively perpetuating misinformation and lies. And Hamas knows that too, and Hamas uses that. BDS. All these politicians. Ilhan Omar. All these people who are doing that. And it makes me angry. It really does. There's nothing I can do about it. Say what else pisses me off, though? The funding. Where do they get these missiles? They don't have any missile factories as far as I'm aware of. Where do they get them? Hmm. It's as if they get their missiles from a place outside. Where do they get their missiles? They get them from Iran. The Palestinians get missiles from Iran. This is openly stated by Hamas. They get their missiles and their weapons from Iran using Iranian money and money sent to them by the US. Trump cut it. Biden returned it. They got about 192 million American dollars to buy missiles with. Now, of course, it's not what they were told that it was for, but they knew it was for that, because that's what they decided to do with it. Trump cut it, Biden returned it, they buy missiles, we get them. Yay. I hope I've effectively debunked most of the bullshit about this. There's going to be more, there's going to be lots more. Stay safe, guys. Any of you in Israel, please be careful. Don't run away. Don't don't be far away from a bomb shelter. If you're in the ancient city, carry around a gun or don't leave the house. Please stay safe, everyone. Don't live in fear, but that doesn't mean you should act stupidly.